Welcome to the fifth of these daily devotions, introducing the book of Proverbs using this book, The Way of Wisdom by Tim Keller. Yesterday we started to think about what it looks like to be foolish and we saw from chapter one uh, of Proverbs, verse 22, that one type of fool is the mocker. Today we're going to look at two more types of fools from that verse. So let me read that verse again, Proverbs 1, verse 22. And wisdom is speaking here. How long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? And the reflections uh, that I'm reading uh, today are from January the 9th and the 10th of this book, Way of Wisdom. Every sort of fool is out of touch with reality, but each kind in a different way. The next fool in this list is the Hebrew for simple. This kind of foolishness is gullibility. Proverbs 14 verse 15 says, the simple believe anything. They are too easily led and influenced. Like children, they may be over impressed by the spectacular and dramatic or they may need approval too much and so be taken in by forceful personalities who give it to them. They will support dictatorial leaders who promise them peace and prosperity. They can be intellectually lazy, not wanting to ponder and think out a matter. They are also likely to fall for get-rich-quick schemes. The simple can change and learn sense, but they can also inherit folly, as Proverbs says in chapter 14 verse 18. They can graduate into being full-blown fools. Nevertheless, we should be careful not to equate credulity and naivety with a lack of sophistication. We once pastored an entire congregation of somewhat unsophisticated people, but they were by no means simple. You can lack sophistication, as the world assesses it, and still be wise. And can, you can be sophisticated, well-off, well-connected and educated, but be simple. Whom have you met who you thought was rather simple, but turned out not to be so? The most common word used for fools in Proverbs is the Hebrew for obstinate. The main mark of fools is that they are opinionated, wise in their own eyes, unable to learn knowledge or be corrected. Child psychologist Jerome Kagan discovered that children are born with one of three basic temperaments that determine how they instinctively respond to difficulty. Some respond with anxiety and withdrawal, some with aggression and assertive action, and some with optimism and an effort to win through by being social and cordial. Each default works well in some situations, but Kagan argued that unless parents intervene, Children's natural temperament will dominate and they won't, le won't learn how to act wisely in situations in which their habitual response is inappropriate or even deadly. In other words, we are naturally obstinate and unwise. Modern culture insists that we should let children be themselves, but what feels most natural to us might be disastrous. To become wise, the anxious must learn to be bolder the bold to be cautious, and the chronically sunny to be more thoughtful. Only in Jesus do we see one who does not habitually assert or withdraw, but always responds appropriately to the situation with perfect wisdom. Where are you most opinionated and least open to new ideas or to criticism? We meet uh, two more types of fools today, the person who is simple and the person who is obstinate. The simple fool is easily led and influenced. They lack discernment and so follow people they shouldn't follow and believe people they shouldn't believe. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 5 says, the simple believe anything but the prudent give thought to their ways. A simple person in the Bible sense doesn't engage their brain they just go with the flow, they follow the crowd, they seek to fit in, and their longing is to be accepted. 
But a wise person isn't led by what others think, by, 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 but by what is right. They grapple with issues. They think hard about things so they make secure and sensible decisions. They're not easily taken in because they operate on principles that they've gleaned from God's word. They understand the world is broken and people are sinful and flawed and so they seek to exercise discernment and make good judgments about things. They're not conforming to the pattern of this world but they're being transformed by the renewing of their minds so that they can discern what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will, as Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The fall, the simple fall. Uh, and then there's the obstinate fall. This type of fall is unwilling and unable to learn. They're opinionated. They set, they're set in their views and they're wise in their own eyes. They are resistant to change and they're adamant about their rightness. You've no doubt met people like this. I certainly have. There's no reasoning with them. Sometimes they're loud and vocal, shouting down all those who disagree with them. Or they can be quiet and smug with an air of superiority and an unwillingness to engage because no one's going to change their minds. But a wise person knows that change and growth is part of the Christian life. I need to change because I'm not perfect and I don't know everything. And so a wise person listens and is prepared to alter their view or position. They're willing to admit that they're wrong. They're willing to accept that the wisdom of others might be greater than their own. They are, in a word, humble. It's challenging, isn't it? to be to, to not be like that we don't want to be a simple fool we don't want to be an obstinate fool do we so let's pray for god's help lord jesus help us to be more humble and willing to change we know we need to grow but we're not always wise so help us not to conform but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds as we engage with your word so that we can discern what is right and be more and more like you, for we ask these things in your name. Amen. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.